alternative formats for this presentation can be found on the Financial Services website. For assistance, visit or contact us at www.queensu.ca slash financial services slash support dot html. Email us at finance.training at queensu.ca or call us at 613-533-2050. Welcome to Accounting 101. This tutorial will introduce you to some of the basic concepts and standards used in the accounting world. It will demonstrate how the day-to-day -day tasks you perform tie into the more complex Queen's accounting world and accounting cycle. Since every organization is different, each must establish its own set of procedures for making payments and collections and recording them for keeping track of customer balances and the amounts due to suppliers, for recording cash balances, and so on. The particular set of procedures that an organization develops to do these things is called the organization's accounting system. It is important to note that departments at Queen's operate on a cash basis rather than an accrual basis of accounting. In this tutorial, topics will include types of accounts, debits and credits, journal entries, budget and transfer accounts, accruals and deferrals, commitments, surpluses and deficits, reconciling and reporting. Part 1. Types of accounts. Types of accounts at Queen's will include asset accounts, those that begin with 1, liability accounts beginning with a 2, equity accounts that begin with 3, revenue accounts beginning with a 4, and expense accounts that will begin with a five or a six. Assets are economic resources owned by the university which benefit its future operations and are convertible to cash. Some examples of assets include cash. This includes physical money such as banknotes and coins as well as amounts deposited in the bank for current use. Accounts receivable includes money owed to the university by external customers and businesses. Accounts receivable arise from sales or services provided on credit. Buildings owned by the university, such as office buildings, residences, parking garages, just to name a few. Liabilities represent debts or obligations of the university that result from past transactions which will be paid with assets or services. Some examples of liabilities are accounts payable, the amount that the university owes to external suppliers, those outside of Queens, which is unpaid yet. Bank loans, loans received from the bank that the university must pay back at defined intervals. Equity or net assets represent cumulative surpluses and deficits over time. It is the residual amounts left in Queen's accounts as a result of reserves and carry-forward amounts. The accounting equation states total assets equal total liabilities plus equity, net assets. Every transaction affects at least two accounts. It is critical to correctly identify the accounts affected and the direction of the effect, increase or decrease. The accounting equation must always remain in balance after each transaction. Revenues are incoming generating activities resulting from sales or services to internal or external parties or sources. The accounting rule for revenue. Revenues are recorded when they have been earned, the revenue principle. Revenues are earned when services have been provided to a customer, the work is completed or when goods are delivered and the legal title to the goods transfers to the customer. This happens at the point of sale when the customer takes physical possession of the goods. It does not matter whether the customer has made payment or not. Some examples of Queen's University incurring revenue include the sale of conference space to an external party, student fees tuition, government operating grants, income earned on investments, research award funding. Expenses are goods and services that are used in the current period. They are recorded in the period in which they are incurred. Assets are the resources that the university owns and uses to carry out its operations. An asset benefits the university at the present time 
and will continue to provide benefits in the future. Therefore, when payments are made for things that provide future benefits to the business, the accountant records an increase in assets. Payments for things that do not provide future benefits are recorded as expenses. Examples of expenses incurred by Queen's University include salaries and benefits, supplies and services, utilities, student assistance, renovations and alterations. Part 2 Introduction to Debits and Credits and Journal Entries Asset and expense accounts normally have debit balances. To increase an asset or expense account balance, you debit the asset account. To decrease an asset or expense account balance, you credit the account. Liability and revenue accounts normally have credit balances. To increase a liability or revenue account balance, you credit the liability or the equity account. To decrease a liability or equity account balance, you debit the account. When creating a journal entry, always ensure that debits equal credits. Transactions are events that change the balance in your assets, liabilities, revenues, and expense accounts. Since accountants must keep track of assets, liabilities, revenues, and expenses, every transaction must be recorded in some way. At Queen's, these changes are recorded as journal entries. A journal entry provides a summary of a transaction and its effects on various accounts. The journal entry will include the date of the transaction, the account titles, debited accounts on top, credited accounts on the bottom, and the amounts, debited amounts on the left and credited amounts on the right. Every financial transaction that is posted to the university's general ledger involves a journal entry. The transaction type determines if the entry is system generated or one that is entered by an administrator using the online journal entry system. All departmental administrators should use the online journal entry functionality. It's easy to use, allows journals to be entered into the system on a real-time basis, and allows departments to control the journal description entered into the system. Examples of system configured generated entries include invoice reimbursement payments by a check requisition, deposits from external sources, payroll and or award payments to individuals. Examples of online entries generated by administrators include allocating costs to accounts, correcting coding errors, transferring monies from one area to another, and year-end accruals deferral adjustments. Journal entry sample of a system-generated entry. Let's say, for example, you purchase toner cartridges at a net cost of $200 from an outside vendor on account. The journal entry invoice would be a debit to expense account for $200 and a credit to the account's payable account for $200. When the vendor is paid by way of a check requisition, the system generates the following journal entry netting the AP account to zero, a debit to the account's payable account for $200, and a credit to the cash account for $200. Here we see a journal entry sample of how to correct an entry. If the amount of the invoice was posted to the wrong expense account, the required correcting entry would be as follows. You would debit the correct expense account for $200, and credit the incorrect expense account for $200. The entry is processed by the departmental administrator using the online journal entry system. More information about this system can be found on the Financial Services training page. Part 3 Budget and Transfer Accounts The Queen's budget model is designed to ensure resources and funding allocations are aligned with the academic goals, encourage and provide incentives for planning and innovation, and provide transparency to decision making. The budget model for Queen's is based on activity-based budgeting. Activity-based budgeting, commonly referred to as responsibility-centered budgeting, is a method of budgeting in which the costs of activities in every functional area or shared service such as library, IT services, student affairs, are attributed to or charged against the revenue that results from faculty and school activity. 
For example, revenue from student enrollment is attributed to the faculty or school who generated the enrollment, the registered and or teaching faculty, and the costs associated with supporting student enrollment, for example, School of Graduate Studies or Student Affairs, is charged out on the basis of enrollment. The budget model decentralizes authority and accountability for resource planning in the university environment, empowering and increasing the self-reliance of faculties and schools, ensuring a greater link between resource allocation and academic goals. In its simplest forms, all revenue flows directly to faculties and schools, and similarly, all expenses and costs are attributed to faculties and schools. The budget model is designed to encourage revenue growth and cost containment and to enhance financial opportunities within the university. Revenue transfers are transactions that reallocate funds from one department or unit within Queen's to another department or unit within Queen's. Similar to internal revenues or internal cost recoveries, there is no net impact on the cash flows or income of the university. For example, when a faculty provides research startup funds to a department in support of an identified program or project. Part 4. Accruals and Deferrals Accrual. To report a revenue or expense that has occurred but has not yet been entered in the accounting records as of the end of the accounting period. Deferral refers to the delay in recognition of an accounting transaction, either a revenue or expense transaction. Accrued revenues are revenues that were earned but not recorded because cash was received after the services were performed or goods were delivered. They need to be recorded to reflect the amount earned and its related receivable account. Deferred revenues are previously recorded liabilities that were created when cash was received in advance and that must be adjusted to reflect the amount of revenue actually earned during the period. Just a reminder, Queen's departments operate for the most part on a cash basis. Accrued expenses are expenses that were incurred but were not recorded because cash was paid after the goods or services were used, i.e. interest payable. Deferred expenses are previously recorded assets that were created when cash was paid in advance and that must be adjusted for the amount of the expense actually incurred during the period through the use of the asset, i.e. prepaid expenses. The account ID identifies the nature of a transaction. It is used consistently across all departments to record revenues and expenses. Accounts that begin with 4, 5, and 6 are income statement accounts, those reflected on your monthly statement of operations report. Accounts that begin with 1, 2, and 3 are balance sheet accounts. Part 5. Commitments. Commitments represent known future expenses which have not yet been incurred. At Queen's, commitments posted to the general ledger can be in the form of salaries and benefits, purchase orders for goods and services, and the overhead component of externally funded research contracts. Accounting for commitments involves earmarking or setting aside funds in response to these planned obligations. These funds remain committed or encumbered until the purchased good or service is paid for after its receipt, thereby converting the encumbrance into an expenditure. For example, when you order goods and services by way of the online purchase requisition system, or you process a salary contract by way of the online HR payroll system, a system-generated journal entry commits or sets aside the funds to pay for the expenses that will occur in the future. Part 6. Surpluses and Deficits A surplus exists when revenues exceed expenses. A deficit exists when expenses exceed revenue. At year-end, the revenue and expense accounts are closed out. The cumulative surpluses and deficits are closed to net assets, and this surplus or deficit then represents the opening carry forward into the next fiscal year. Here we have an example of what your departmental statement of operations might look like. 
On April 30th, the closing balance reflected in the year-to-date actuals column, whether surplus or deficit, is added to your department's opening equity and becomes the department's opening surplus or deficit on May 1st. In this sample, the closing surplus of $450,031.78 on April 30th is the opening surplus on May 1st. Part 7. Reconciling and Reporting To ensure all financial activity is accounted for, it is important that departmental administrators reconcile revenues and expenses, transactional data, against the Statement of Operations Surplus Deficit. To learn more about reconciling, visit the Financial Services Training page. Information about assets, liabilities, revenues, and expenses is summarized at the end of the accounting period and then reported to the users of the information in standardized financial statements. At Queen's University, the fiscal year runs from May 1st to April 30th. The university's financial reports are released after the end of the fiscal year, after April 30th. To view examples of Queen's annual reports, visit the Financial Services Publications page. How may we help you today? Contact us by telephone at 613-533-2050. Our fax number is 613-533-6433. Email us at finance at queensu.ca. We are located at 207 Stewart Street, third floor, Rideau Building. Our hours of operation are Monday to Friday. We are open from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. and closed during the noon hour. This concludes our tutorial. To learn more or to review additional training resources and video tutorials, visit the Financial Services training page.